and welcome to Discover Oklahoma. I'm Lauren Nelson coming to you from the Fine Arts Institute of Edmond. Dina will be off for a few weeks. So for now, it's just me showing you around this incredible place for creativity in the visual and performing arts. You can visit and check out their gallery or participate in a class, play, or if you live nearby, take part in one of their choirs. We'll take you around throughout the show. But first, how about a fishing trip? Deanne Stein takes us to Northwest Oklahoma to cast a line in Canton Lake. Canton Lake is a favorite for serious anglers because of the variety of fish you can catch here, especially the sometimes elusive walleye. They're uh, tricky fish to catch. Mark Munkress has fished here at Canton Lake since he was a kid. Walleye are kind of finicky. Uh, they tend to want to bite late in the evening, so sometimes the guy's got to fish at night. And... So for him, he's not that picky about his catch. Yeah, there are a lot of fishes, channel cat, crappie, walleye, sand bass, uh, blue cat, whatever's biting. I like to fish anything. The lake stays stocked with fish thanks to the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation. They took us out for a day on the lake to show us how they do it. Canton Lake is definitely known for their walleye population. The walleye population is large because Canton Lake is a spawning lake, meaning the wildlife department takes the fish out to reproduce and later stocks the lake with even more fish. The anglers of Oklahoma benefit the most. But today, we are headed to the mouth of the North Canadian River to collect white bass males. Usually it's the end of March, first of April, the water temperatures will get about 55 to 60 degrees, and the white bass will run up these rivers to spawn. So the crew will travel up and down the river to collect as many fish as they can to later fertilize eggs from the striped females to create a hybrid striped bass. Hybrid striped bass are really sought out fish. They're, they grow fast, they're, they're aggressive and our anglers just love to catch them. Last year the lake was stocked with 41,000 hybrid striped bass. They're bigger fish than the white bass and uh, they're more aggressive than the striper and they're just a good fish to catch and they're, they're good to eat. And according to these experts, the best time to catch the hybrid striped bass is in the summer with live bait. Discovering Oklahoma at Canton Lake, I'm Deanne Stein. If you're ready to head out on a fishing trip, you need to check out the Oklahoma Fishing Trail. We can hook you up with a free copy of the brochure, or you can just download it. Go to fishinok.com. Getting out on the water is always fun, but there's lots of excitement for land lovers too. Right now, Dino Lolly takes us to the bike trails in Elk City. You gotta come out here. We've rode several trails through Oklahoma, and Elk City Lake Trails is literally have a little bit of everything that Oklahoma has to offer. That's true, you have a little bit of flat terrain and then not so flat terrain, much like Oklahoma's 12 diverse ecosystems. Just stay on this trail. Okay. The Lake Elk City bike trails have been around for 30 years. There was a time when they had fallen into disrepair, but a group of biking enthusiasts jumped in and whipped the 12 and a half miles of trails into shape. And about six or eight years ago, it just seemed like all of a sudden there was three or four little groups of of buddies that kind of jumped into mountain biking and we looked up and we were kind of all out here and we give this thing a facelift and it's probably as good a shape as we've ever had it. The trails wind through picturesque countryside. At one of the entrances to the trails you will find Garage Bicycle Works. Jeff Terrell is the owner and he says a lot of people didn't even know they were here. We got lucky enough to get the shop right here by the trailhead and so they see the trails and they ask us about where the trails are and we just point it's right there and they're like that they, they didn't realize that they could literally come and ride right here the diversity of the area makes this even more alluring while exciting and exhilarating it's also relaxing and trees are not the only thing that's part of the scenery it's just peaceful i mean you can come out by yourself you can come out and ride blow some stress off whatever just so you don't ever know what you're going to see out here we've got some wildlife you'll run into some deer the lake's very beautiful by the way, these are multi-purpose trails. Some folks run them, walk, and hike them. You can even ride a horse here. What's not allowed is any kind of motorized vehicle. Now, no matter your skill level, though, you can find a place to ride. Anybody can ride out here. You can. Uh, we tell people if you've never seen the pits and you've never rode the pits, uh, go with somebody that has. 
and, and, and they're real easy to bypass. There's nothing out here that's going to force you to ride something beyond your skill level. Given Oklahoma's weather, you can even ride year-round. An added bonus to this area next to the lake is a new camping site. You can bring your family out and spend all day or multiple days right here. There's so much to do at the lake, whether that's these trail systems or uh, the disc golf course, which was uh, just recently put in, I believe, two years ago. Um, we've also got all of the amenities as far as camping and uh, RV hookups and that kind of stuff. The mayor describes this area as a gem. Not only is it beautiful, but there's a feeling of freedom here, a chance to reconnect with nature. But the enthusiasm for riding bikes is contagious. But well, we love to meet new people, ride with new people. So if you're coming to town and you're not comfortable just taking the adventure, afraid you'll get lost, call the bike shop and Jeff will set something up with one of us local guys. would love to take you around and show you a lap. The life out here has really started to take a form of its own and it's exciting to see. So the city, you know, we have plans to invest and to keep making it better. You'll find more information on the bike trails and other fun activities at Elk Lane on the city's website. Visit elkcity.com. Coming up on Discover Oklahoma. It makes you realize there's areas maybe that you haven't visited or a different perspective of things to see in Tulsa. A different view of Oklahoma that might be as close as your own backyard. It's just a, just a family fun environment for everyone. Plus, family fun and sweet treats that will make your mouth water. We show you where. We have what's called uh, our fried pickles. It is completely different. Nobody expects it. And wait till you hear what else they're serving up at this Enid hotspot. It's all coming up right here on Discover Oklahoma. Imagine limitless possibilities with the Oklahoma Travel Guide. Imagine world-class wonderlands, road trips that inspire. Imagine date night elevated. Order your free guide at TravelOK.com. Imagine that. Welcome back to Discover Oklahoma, coming to you from the Fine Arts Institute of Edmond, where we're taking a look at some of the wonderful works of art here in the art gallery. We hope that everyone will get out and discover our great state this summer, and one destination we suggest, the Gilcrease Museum. Right now, Jason Grubbs takes us to check out their latest exhibit, Assignment Tulsa. For those of us that live in Tulsa, we know why the city's so great. And now, the Gilcrease Museum's latest exhibit, Assignment Tulsa, showcases that to anyone who visits. You know, I've talked to many visitors while they're in the space, as well as the photographers that took these photographs, and what it has confirmed, I think, for me, is how much we love Tulsa. Curator of History Mark Dolph says the exhibit is a collaboration between the Gilcrease and a Tulsa photography club called Photog, a mix of professionals and enthusiasts. Assignment Tulsa assigned five topics over five months, July through November of 2020. And the themes were Tulsa buildings, Tulsa icons, Tulsa parks, Tulsa people, and the fifth month was open. Anything as long as it had something to do with Tulsa. 150 photographs were submitted by 150 photographers. What you see on the walls today are the top 49 winners taken by 29 people. Cindy McKinney was among those with multiple wins, three in fact. Her first came in the first assignment, buildings. She's always been fascinated with the BOK Tower. And then it just happened, it was early kind of in the morning and there was the reflection on the on the building next door and so that I that's how I captured it I just saw that beautiful light and the reflection of the BOK tower throughout the exhibit you'll see not only buildings but parks people and places you may be familiar with but from angles you might not have seen before it makes you realize there's areas maybe that you haven't visited or a different perspective of things to see in Tulsa. The photographs in many cases show what was happening here in Tulsa at this very specific time. During 2020, there are of course moments of social protest and the pandemic. One of my favorite photographs is the Tulsa icon. In this case, it's the Buck Adams um, sculpture statue that's near the corner of 11th and Peoria. And so we have Buck Adams, this new Tulsa icon, but he's wearing a mask. Cindy's first thought for the icon assignment was the historic and colorful marquee lights of the Circle Cinema. Her winning moment, pure luck. I was probably there half an hour taking pictures and, and I was getting ready to pack up and leave and I heard a fire truck. So, you know, I always say I got lucky because the Tulsa Fire Department helped me with light painting that night. For curators, the exhibit is even more special than their normal assignments. 
While many museum visitors come to admire works by world-renowned artists, a showcase of people you might see around town takes art appreciation to another level. Yes, we can take the Thomas Morans and the uh, Frederick Remington, Charlie Russell works out of our collection and do an exhibition, but to do one from folks that live in our community and display their work like we have here at an assignment Tulsa, I think really underscores the talent we have right here in our community. At the Gilcrease Museum in Tulsa, I'm Jason Grubbs for Discover Oklahoma. Assignment Tulsa is on display through July 4th. Children under 18, K through 12 teachers and veterans with an ID get in free. For more information about their hours, you can check out their website, gilcrease.org. After you spend some time at the Gilcrease, it may be time for a sweet treat, and we've got a place in Tulsa that you've just gotta try. Julie Chin takes us to Sugar Llamas. Fresh, warm, mouth-watering mini donuts. Need we say more? The donuts are just so good. And just like the hot donuts they're known for, Sugar Llamas has quickly become one of the hottest spots in South Tulsa. When mom says we're going to Sugar Llamas, what do you think? Um, I just went to the car and go. Former Tulsa police officers Dallas and Robin Jones recently opened this family business. You won't just find this husband and wife team working here. Their five kids help man the store too. It's just a just a family fun environment for everyone. And there's something for everyone here. The store makes nearly 2,000 mini donuts daily. These cake donuts are crispy on the outside and fluffy on the inside. They're mini and they taste like funnel cake. They all begin with a vanilla cake batter. Then they're deep fried in small batches so that your order is served warm and fresh. You choose your toppings from there. We have, I think, 14 different drizzles that we can put on top, but we've kind of made our llama legends where people, we've already done the work for you. Um, so like a bamberry would be a blueberry drizzle and a lemon drizzle, or we have a boss hog that uh, actually has real bacon and maple drizzle. And so we have all these different combinations that's kind of already done. The cinnamon sugar is a top seller, but customers we spoke to love to mix up their minis. Do you have a favorite flavor? Um, Flintstone. Sprinkle donuts, powdered sugar with chocolate drizzle on top. The combinations are endless, and Sugar Llamas serves more than donuts. You'll also find a full coffee bar featuring a regional roast that's ground fresh daily. We do the lattes, the frappuccinos, the pour overs, everything that, that you can get at a good, a good coffee shop we have. Coffee is outstanding. I prefer the vanilla latte or the oat milk. Latte. They have oat milk, they have almond milk, they have coconut milk, so even for people who can't have dairy, they have options. A free cinnamon sugar mini donut comes with every coffee. If ice cream is more your style, you can grab a creamy, dreamy scoop of that here too. There are about a dozen different flavors, from the classics to house specialties like banana pudding and llamalicious. It's a bright yellow, um, it's like a, a, a cookie dough type flavor that the kids love. There's also the best of both worlds with the Sugar Llama Smash, where you get two scoops of ice cream sandwiched in between a donut. Yeah, it's really good. Sugar Llamas, a sweet new addition to South Tulsa. The owners are amazing. They take care of you. They support our schools. They support our sports teams. So everyone needs to come out and support them. It's just all about having a you know, good treat uh, and having a good time, and I think we've done that, and I think people see that when they come in. Sugar Llamas is open seven days a week. You can stop in morning, noon, or night, and when you do, make sure to take a picture with their llama selfie wall. In Tulsa, I'm Julie Chin, Discovering Oklahoma. You'll find Sugar Llamas at 130 South Mingo Road. They're open seven days a week. Check out their website or Facebook page for more information. Coming up on Discover Oklahoma, I think coconut cream goes the fastest, followed by my grandmother's pie, um, and then maybe apple after that. Key lime would follow there. Pie worth the drive. See where you've just got to go if you're after an incredible dessert. Enid's just a fantastic place to be. And how about a bite in Enid? Where you should go when Discover Oklahoma continues. Why order a free Oklahoma outdoor guide? Uncover unique wonders. Cultivate your curiosity and wake up your wild side. Order or download your free copy today. 
Welcome back to Discover Oklahoma, coming to you today from the Fine Arts Institute of Edmond, where you can sign up to take one of a number of classes in a classroom just like this one. Not too far from here is a new spot within the last year to Edmond, the Edmond Rail Yard. Lots of fun to be had there. And when you visit, be sure to go around back and check out Rail Yard Pie Company. A great piece of pie is reminiscent of a special meal or maybe a special person who made delicious pies. But what if you could get an amazing slice of pie any day of the week? You'll find just that at Rail Yard Pie Company in Edmond. I think pie evokes a feeling in people um, different than, um, than other um, sweets. It, I, I don't know if it's because people know that it takes time. I mean, it's a labor of love. For me, it came out of adversity. I went through a divorce and um, it, I needed to find a way to pay my bills. So I started making meals and delivering them. And one of my clients asked at one point if I did desserts. And I said, I do, I, I, like, I love to make pies. Lynn perfected her pies and folks around town started noticing. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner, any time of day is the right time for a piece of pie. And here at Rail Yard Pie Company, there are 12 different flavors of sweet pies to choose from. Well, all the traditionals from like coconut cream and uh, my grandmother May's pies on there. May's chocolate cream pie is my grandmother's pie. Uh, we have a chocolate mocha pie. Uh, we have apple, we do an apple crumble and uh, pecan pie. So we have those traditional pies that are on there all the time. And then seasonally, we'll add things, uh, fresh fruit pies. We won't have cherry pie till cherries are in season or peaches till it's August and berries in the summer. Um, we will only have on the menu what is currently fresh and in season. And then we have whoopie pies and oatmeal cream pies. Oatmeal cream pies with salted caramel buttercream. Can't go wrong with that. <laughs> I think coconut cream goes the fastest, followed by my grandmother's pie, um, and then maybe apple after that. Key lime would follow there. If you're in the mood for something savory, they've got that too. We have five. Um, we have Jay's spinach quiche, um, which is um, our family favorite. I, we've eaten it for decades. We have uh, an Italian sausage quiche um, with red, roasted red bell peppers, uh, butternut squash quiche, roasted butternut squash, and it's so good. It's got Gruyere cheese and Swiss cheese, so it's amazing. And uh, what am I missing? Our beet. So our beet is our most um, unloved, generally unloved quiche. When they try it, then they love it. So we're trying to bring fans over to, to that. Quiche Lorraine, quiche Lorraine. Just your good old fashioned cream and eggs and butter and bacon. Any kind of pie you could be craving and a sweet atmosphere to enjoy it in. It's all right here at Rail Yard Pie Company. Come check it out. A slower pace of life. Um, people who care about serving them. Good pie. Again, I think the pie is just the vehicle to, um, to loving on people. I want them to come in these stores and take a breath and enjoy the space and enjoy the people that are here to serve them and, um, and remember what pie tastes like. If your mouth is watering, you'll have to be a little bit patient. Rail Yard Pie is closed Sunday and Monday. They're open 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. the rest of the week. You'll find them at 19 West 1st Street in Edmond. Up next on Discover Oklahoma, we have a pan-fried mahi-mahi Reuben. And you won't believe what else is on the menu. Find out when Discover Oklahoma continues. Make a date with the great outdoors with the Oklahoma State Parks app. Explore trails, discover events, get deals, book lodging, campsites, and more. Download the Oklahoma State Parks app. Experience a state of wonder. We've really enjoyed our time here today at the Fine Arts Institute of Edmond. But before we go, we want to show you a great place to grab a meal. Dino checks out Cherokee Ranch Land and Cattle Company in Enid. Here we are after 35, 36 years of being gone. We're back home in Enid, uh, fulfilling our dream. And uh, we've opened uh, Cherokee Ranch Land and Cattle Company. A native of Enid, Rodney Britton was excited to return home and open the restaurant with his business partner. They completely redid this 31,000 square foot building and it all fit into the concept for the place. We kind of knew that we wanted to go a little bit back in time. We wanted a ranchy feel. And that works really well. There is a sense of nostalgia here. While reflecting an open range, there's an open, relaxed, comfortable feeling. One section off the dining room is called the stables. It's a lot of fun. Well, because they are built like horse stalls. But let's talk about their outstanding food. 
Now, this place is so much more than a steakhouse. We have a pan-fried mahi-mahi Reuben. And believe me, this is delicious and oh, so tasty. I think the, the menu is just outstanding and it's, it's a little bit of everything. They have chopped sirloin, chicken fried steak, raised in pork chops, pasta dishes, burgers, Philly cheesesteak sandwiches, and even crab cakes. And yes, I'll get to the steaks in just a second. But first, I have to mention one of their very yummy and distinctive appetizers. We have what's called uh, our fried pickles. It is completely different. Nobody expects it. We're not chopping them in, in little pieces and then breading them and throwing them in a fryer. We take a spring roll, we put Havarti cheese, provolone, and then we put the pickle in it, we wrap it really tight, and then we stick it in the freezer. The fried pickles were amazing. These are very popular, and the sauce that comes with the fried pickles are killer good. All right, let's talk about their ribeyes. We've got three different sizes of ribeyes. We kept it as the Old West, and we've got pricing all across the board. We've got steaks from $17.29, core up to $48.29. And the 4829 is a 30-inch tomahawk bone-in ribeye. And that's a great price for a, a, that type of steak. I found the steak perfectly seasoned, very tender, and rich in flavor. Their desserts, oh my yes, everything from homemade peach cobbler to creme brulee and strawberry Devonshire, everything was very, very good. The food's pretty awesome. This is my fourth time. I've done the ribeyes. I've... Uh, done the hamburger and I did the pork chop. And so far everything's been delicious. Uh, well served, well, well cooked. Uh, the atmosphere just goes right along with the food. Well, the food here is tremendous. Yeah, everything's made from scratch and and uh, everything has its own, own kind of flavor. We want it to be uh, a, a step above. So our step above would be everything from 90% 90, 90 of in kitchen made from scratch. So if it's everything from sauces to whipped cream for desserts to soups. I mean, everything is done. Mashed potatoes we go through. They like potatoes in Oklahoma. I mean, it's just a fantastic place to be. Cherokee Ranch Land and Cattle Company is open seven days a week. They're located at 112 East Cherokee Avenue in Enid. Check out their website to look over the menu or find operating hours. A big thank you to the great folks here at the Fine Arts Institute of Edmond for hosting us this week. You'll find them at 27 Edwards Street here in Edmond. Check out their website, edmundfinearts.com, to plan your visit, take a class, or enroll in a summer camp. Coming up next Saturday on Discover Oklahoma, we're hitting the sand dunes of northwestern Oklahoma. Come along with us to Little Sahara. And we're in the rainforest at the Tulsa Zoo, an experience you won't want to miss. Coming up next week right here on Discover Oklahoma. Just a reminder, Dina will be back in a couple of weeks. So until next time, remember, there's always something to discover in Oklahoma.